Hey everyone, so I came across a, an old clip of Dr. Jordan Peterson talking about Jewish mysticism. And I know when, when he brings up topics of religion, so the philosophy of religion or the archetypes that are mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, uh, those in the religious community sometimes can have, at best, I would say mixed feelings. Because on the one hand, it's kind of interesting hearing someone coming from a secular perspective, a psychological perspective, talking about these concepts. It's kind of neat and interesting. And on the other hand, we want to make sure that he's giving it due justice and talking about it uh, in the proper way. So there is this kind of like mixed feelings. What is he going to say and how is he going to say it? But this clip was, was pretty interesting and I want to play it in its entirety to, to kind of... Uh, really give proper context and an idea, and then maybe talk about it a little bit afterwards. Check this out. I read, for example, an old Jewish commentary about the reason for creation. Whenever Jordan Peterson quotes a Jewish idea, I become both excited and nervous. Excited because he can potentially increase the world's appreciation of the original Abrahamic faith. But nervous because, well, he doesn't always explain it correctly. I have in the past critiqued Dr. Peterson's view of Judaism respectfully, but sometimes he nails it far better than I could have ever imagined. So I was pleasantly surprised when I heard him quote this supremely deep idea from the Kabbalistic tradition. Uh, a being with the classical attributes of God. And the question is, well, what does a being with those attributes lack? And the answer is limitation. Contained within this strange riddle lies the secret to the most important question of all. Why are we all here? If we can understand what this riddle is saying, it just may change how we understand the fundamental purpose of life. Here's the Mensch Sense take. Our Kabbalistic puzzle is seeking to answer a question, which Dr. Peterson explains is this. Why would a perfect God need to create anything at all? The solution is that in some strange way, God might be perfect, but there's something missing from perfection. What's missing? Well, imperfection. In Peterson's terminology, an infinite being lacks limitation. And so in order for limitation to exist, God creates our finite universe. Okay, problem solved. But if you're paying attention, this answer gives rise to an even bigger question, which is, What's so important about limitation? We've created this sort of word game by saying that perfection isn't really perfect because it lacks limitation. But that's like saying a really kind and generous person isn't so great because he's lacking cruelty and stinginess. Is that really a lack at all? So too, if we understand God to be perfect in every way, then what we're really saying is that God lacks evil and suffering, and that's somehow a limitation. But why then is a world of limitations so important such that God concocted this massive experiment called existence? Was it only in order to create suffering? Does that make any sense at all? To address this issue, we need to fill in one more detail that's missing from this puzzle. The revolutionary 20th century thinker Rabbi Avraham Yitzchak Cook explained this exact riddle in the following way. There are, in fact, two types of perfection. The first is a static perfection, something that exists flawlessly, unchanged beyond time and space. That is the realm of God, as stated by the prophet Malachi, I am God, I do not change. This perfection is like a diamond, unfazed by the passage of time. But there is another type of perfection, a dynamic perfection, that involves not just being perfect, but becoming perfect. A helpful way to understand this is to imagine what a perfect story would look like. The characters of the story would begin with lack. They would need to endure hardship and overcome obstacles. In the process, they would repair their flaws and earn their perfection. If you could do absolutely anything you wanted at any point and be anywhere you wanted and be anything you wanted, and if, if there was nothing that was out of your reach, there would be nothing to do because you'd be everything at once. And when you're everything at once, which is at least in principle the position of God, there's no story and there's no being and there's something about being that is a story. This is what dynamic perfection looks like. It's a type of perfection that a flawless diamond could never convey. Dr. Peterson also helpfully explains it in the context of a game. 
And you know this because you'll all play games. You play video games, you play games with other people. When you play those games, you put, you put limits on yourself. You play by a set of rules. And the reason you do that is when you limit yourself, arbitrarily in some ways, whole new worlds of possibility emerge. It all adds up to the same idea. Limitation allows for growth, for becoming, for achieving. It allows for a journey instead of just a destination. And although the journey is often fraught with pain and difficulty, it's what makes life beautiful. We often catch ourselves wishing to be finished. We fetishize vacations on the beach or early retirement. Our culture is obsessed with leisure time and entertainment. But what this Kabbalist riddle is teaching us is that our universe is a time for effort and growth. Almost by definition, any pleasure we derive from being finished is short-lived and unsatisfying in the long run. Just ask retirees how long it takes before you get bored of doing nothing. By understanding why our universe exists, we can learn how to maximize our time within it. We live in a reality of limitation. Rather than seeing that as a tragic impediment to a complete and perfect destination, let us instead see it for the gift that it truly is, the opportunity to fall in love with the journey. And that... Okay, so there, there's a lot of interesting uh, insights over here. Uh, I think well, I want to comment on a few different things that took place in that video. Number one, one of the comments that were made was about the person doing kindness. We, they said that if a person is doing kindness, it, are they limited? Is a kindness lacking if they don't have the concept of cruelty embedded in them? Well, I would say the answer to that was yes. Because think about the quality of the kindness. If, there, if kindness is the only option, like an angel, there's no, there's no opposition, there is no uh, concept of cruelty within the person that the person is overcoming, that, that kindness is lacking in something. The, the qualitatively better kind of kindness is the kindness where there's an option to be cruel, yet the person chooses on their own volition to be kind. Right, think about it. If you have no other choice but to be kind, that's one kind of kindness, and that's good. But there's, an, there's a much better sort of kindness, a qualitatively better kind of kindness, that when the person who is kind and, and overcomes themselves and overcomes the temptation to be cruel, even though they have the concept of cruelty within them, that person who does kind much more praiseworthy. So there is a certain lacking in the kindness if there's not cruelty within the person as a whole. This, this does bring a broader concept to why God created the universe. Now, God doesn't need anything. God doesn't need us. God doesn't need a universe. There was nothing lacking in God. But one of the things that we can also simultaneously say, uh, being that God did create a universe, is to give some perspective as to why that may have been. And there's an interesting idea that is brought out in Jewish mysticism. And that idea is as follows. When God was without a universe, when there was God without, without the concept of a universe, that there was only the concept of infinite godly energy, of infinite godly light. By creating a scenario, by creating a forum in which godliness is perceived as not present, where godliness is concealed, and then putting beings in it that have the free choice, that have the ability to see past the facade, the veneer, the darkness of the physical world, and see the truth, the reality, the godliness that is there, and choose godliness, well, that's the ultimate sort of revelation of godliness that there could possibly be. And so the idea is as follows. Godliness being revealed is one thing. But godliness being revealed in the forum that was created to conceal it, that is the ultimate revelation of godliness. And perhaps that is part and parcel with why God created the world.